wondrous night, send forth your Son, Jesus Christ. Look upon your faithful people gathered in your holy church tonight, commemorating the nativity of our Lord in the stable in Bethlehem. Grant, we implore you, that the Savior of the world might be born again in the hearts and souls of all people of the world. Unto you we sing and give praise, honor and glory, and we ask you to instill in us godliness and holy love, strengthen our faith, and grant us your true peaceful peace that brings only you that we find in you. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, on this most holy of all nights, the night when your word was made flesh, a night when the animals and all the objects of nature sang praise unto you, as a symbol of the new creation of Christmas, we look to the evergreen tree, which remains vibrant throughout the winter months, awaiting the opportunity to praise the Son of God at his birth. Bless this Christmas tree, and may we be as vigilant as we await your return. We ask this in the name of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon this thurible and incense, and may the rising of the smoke be acceptable unto you, O Lord God. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon this crush. And may all those who partake of this nativity scene find the Christ born in their hearts this evening. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon this Christmas tree. And may it bring to mind the strength that the good Lord gives all his creation. Please be seated. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord, let us all say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Today is Christmas Eve, in which we recall the hope we have in Christ. 
Today, this evening, we light again the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. The first candle, we speak of hope because God keeps his promises to us. The second candle, we work for peace because Jesus is the Prince of Peace and he calls his children to work for peace in his name. The third candle, we share joy because the Holy Spirit fills our hearts and minds with the presence of God. The fourth candle, we show love because Jesus gave everything for us and led us to know the forgiveness of God. Now we light our last candle to remember the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As the prophets promised so long ago, you have come to us once again, O Lord, and with the shepherds, we are all filled with wonder and amazement. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you came into this world as a tiny, fragile baby. Yet we know that you are God and that you are in us and with us tonight. May the flame of this candle remind us that you are the light of the world, and that if we follow you, we will never walk in darkness, but will have the true light of life. Let us all say, Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen.
It is with our tradition that we welcome Santa and Mrs. Claus, who represent the spirit of Christmas and St. Nicholas, Bishop of Myra, who in the fourth century gave presents in love to the poor. Our organist, Mrs. Jane Ripko, will now play an instrumental of the Christmas hymn, The First Noel. Santa?
Over the past few years, you've come and you've paid homage to the Christ child and you've brought a lot of gifts and love to this parish. I'd like to give to you and to Mrs. Kloss a little gift from us, thanking you for all the love that you've shared with us. God bless, and may you bring a lot of happiness and love to all that you will visit tonight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we will go unto the altar of God. God our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, on this most holy of all nights, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves, that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. And now, my brothers and sisters, having confessed our sins unto God, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his power given unto me by him, I absolve you of your sins, 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, announce salvation day after day. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you make this holy night radiant with the splendor of Jesus Christ, the long-awaited Messiah. We welcome him as Lord, our light, the true light of the world. May he bring us to eternal joy in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwell in the land of blue, the light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Median. For every boot that tramped in battle, Every cloak rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sus sustains by judgment and justice both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age 
as we await the blessed hope, the, the appearance of glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord, who said to me, You are my son, today I am your father. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Gospel according to Saint Luke. To you, Lord. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee from the town of Nazareth to the Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the field and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid for behold I proclaim you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For today in the city of David a Savior has been born for you his Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord.
the only blind person at Christmas time is he who does not have Christmas in their heart. These words are taken from Helen Keller. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, gathered on this most special night. I think most of us know a little bit about the life of Helen Keller. Truly a remarkable person who at only 90, 19 months old became a victim of what is now known as scarlet fever. She lost her sight, her hearing, and the ability to speak. It should be noted that one day, toward the end of her life, she was asked about God, and she said, I did not know his name, but I knew he was always there. May we be granted this evening such illumination in our lives to know that he was, and that he is, and that he will always be there. Of all the stories related to that first nativity, I think of the humble shepherds who we read about in today's gospel. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone round them and they were fear, filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which shall come to all people. For to you is born this day, in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was, with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and peace among men with whom he is pleased. Peace among all men. We read in the Old Testament of the prophet Isaiah who wrote 700 years prior to the birth of the Messiah. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus was to become a Prince of Peace to all men who would believe. Christ came into a world where peace was so needed he comes into our world today, where peace is so needed. It is at this most special time of the year, where Christians are called upon not only to give God glory, but to expand, extend the spirit of the Christ child within themselves to all they come in contact with. You know, our Lord came into this world of ours some 2,000 years ago to bring peace and healing. John declares in his gospel that Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but rather to save it. Jesus' entire life was built on giving hope, peace, joy, and love to all, represented at and with our Advent wreath, with the Christ candle being a representation of his divinity before all of us. This was the good news that began with the birth of a child, the Son of God. 
associated with that hope, peace, and joy. Chris, Christmas is most strongly associated with love. Again, one of my favorite scripture passages, and it is a passage that brings all who would believe in him together in one body and one spirit. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Love and peace are synonymous with Christmas. Even during the bloodiest of all battles in the history of mankind, there were countless examples of where enemies of opposing sides would call a truce of peace at Christmas. It was during the American Civil War that Union soldiers would gather together with Confederate soldiers and exchange gifts at Christmas time of coffee and tobacco. It was during War, War War I that German, British, and American soldiers would cross no man's land under a white flag of peace and who would come together and sing Silent Night in their own native tongues on a night prior to a major battle. Love and peace at Christmas is a message that we all need to carry to others at this most special time of the year as well as throughout the year. It is a message of glad tiding and peace that can exist among all peoples if they truly seek the meaning of love at Christmas. In our very midst, the Christ child is found in the lives of those in nursing homes, among disabled veterans, those sleeping on the streets this night or under bridges. Christ came not to save just a few or a selective group, but this ultimate act of love that he showed later in his life by the shedding of his blood was not for just one person, but for all of mankind. Was this not the message that the angels shared with the shepherds that first Christmas night? I bring you good news of a great joy, which shall be for all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Let the blessings of this most special birth be found in each one of our hearts this night. And may the spirit of the Christ child guide us to share with others the joy we find within ourselves, the very joy which is our own salvation. For in its deepest meaning, we find that it all started with the birth of a child who was to become and who is the Savior and Redeemer of mankind. My dear brothers and sisters, may this Christmas night be a night when each of us come with joy. For on that first night, in the humbleness and lowliness of his birth, this child, this Prince of Peace, was born in a simple manger and in a stable. May Christ our Lord bring to each one of us this night a greater light of illumination of him who offered us life and possesses it more abundantly. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, 
the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, the judge of the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice before the Lord, who comes, who comes to govern the earth, to govern the world with justice and the people with faithfulness. sins, offenses, and omissions for all faithful Christians living in death. intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands through the praise and glory of His name for our good and the of His holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, Accept our gifts on this joyful feast of our salvation. By our communion with God made man, may we become more like him. 
who joins our lives to yours. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The whole Lord be with you. to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You sent Jesus Christ, who conceived by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary, most holy. We have come to know and love you as our perfect Father through the revealed mystery of the incarnate Word, your Son. We praise you, Father, this evening, and through your Son, now made visible, we long to be with you, our unseen God. Therefore, we join with the voices of the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels, and all your angels, along with all the saints and the entire church. And we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord.
At that solemn moment, so great for the whole of humankind, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, in giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty of your own gifts and presence, a pure offering, a holy offering. and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy, number in their company, Lord, not pointing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Lord.
deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. Man, at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, receive the body.
in holy splendor before the day star like the dew I begot you the Lord be with you and also with you let us pray God our Father in receiving this Eucharist we rejoice in the birth of our Savior May we share his life completely by living as he had taught us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. of our worship be pleasing to you most holy trinity and grant that the sacrifice which i the one worthy have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for our, yourselves and ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it through christ our lord amen may the almighty and merciful god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that all men might believe through him, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man is coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. church tonight, Christmas Eve. I thank you for coming and sharing in prayer with your loved ones. Please take the blessing of Almighty God with you and share it with others. I want to thank Jane Gripko who is playing our organ tonight. <laughs> You made it, Jane. <laughs> I want to thank the members of the choir. I want to thank especially this evening, Katie Utrecht, who, who performed wonderfully. Thank you, Katie. You gave a little more depth, a lot more depth, to our service tonight. And I thank you, and I thank your parents and your brother for coming this evening. I want to thank Eric and I want to thank Wayne. Um, as you came into the church, I hope you looked up at the stained glass window. Uh, long in coming, 
Um, I want to thank Eric and Wayne for helping to, to, to put the interior light. I had one person that said to me, you know, Father, I've been coming to this church for many years and I didn't know that there was a stained glass window up there. Do you know, not to keep you, but you know, every single one of these windows, with the exception of the one that is above the front of our church, are painted. Now you have to understand that this, this church, on the first day that there was a holy mass, it was not held here. But nine months later, four Polish immigrants came together and they built this church. They didn't have a lot of money, so what they did is that they had an artist that came in and painted all the windows. The only true stained glass window that we have in this church is the one that's above our front entrance. And we are so grateful. It is long in coming after some vandalism, but we now have a light and we are able to project that light as a beacon for those who would come and worship in this holy place. You know, it's been about 90 years in which people came to worship Christmas in this church. Many of them are grandparents, our parents, and fellow family members. And it is during the Valia or the Vigilia, which is the Christmas Eve dinner, that we have that extra place open. And we invite our departed loved ones to share that special meal. There's a special meal that took place this evening, and it is in the spirit of all those who came before us that came and worshiped in this holy church that we remember them this evening. I want to thank Eric DeBrincy for recording tonight's mass. Um, so, so much work and so much preparation, uh, it, it takes place, and it is you good people who, who come and worship in this church, who sing praises unto God. We are so grateful that we have a heritage that we can be proud of. I ask that in your prayers this evening, you remember all those who are ill in the hospital and are shut-ins at home. I want to thank you again for the dear ladies and the gentlemen who helped decorate our church for Christmas. May God return to you what you have given to your church. May God bless all of you. And on behalf of the parish committee and myself personally, we wish to extend to you the deepest wishes for a very Merry Christmas with you and your loved ones. And as we come toward a new year, a year that will be filled with health, peace, and prosperity. God bless all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And to the Lord, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for our departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Amen. May they rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we leave, I've got one more thing I need to say, or I'm going to be in big problems and trouble. I want to thank Santa and Mrs. Claus. And may the spirit of Christmas be with us. She shot and plagued him. <laughs>